back, Nail Queen. So today, yep, you already guessed it. We're gonna do the Cards Pick collab for the month of March. So I started this collab in February thanks to the suggestion and help of two wonderful creators in the community. So if you missed out on the February one, I'll link the video in the description box so you guys can go watch it and learn all about the collab. But it's time to do the March collab. And I have the Isabel May Dr. Prince & Co. Manicure Roulette like expansion pack. And I've seen the cards in here and they're really beautiful. They're not super duper flashy. So I felt like maybe I could do like two accent nails based on a theme that I pick from here, but also make this the March collab. So first off, I wanna pick a winner of the collab. Um, and so there were three entries that I know of into the Cards Pick collab. I could be wrong, but these were the people who used the hashtag Cards Pick collab, so I'm able to actually see their post. If you don't use the hashtag or you don't tag me in it, I can't see your post. This is over on Instagram. I also checked in my Facebook group, and it looks like two people entered into my Facebook group, so I am checking on multiple platforms. So there were three entries, one, two, and three. Maybe it should be one, two, and three. Yeah, because this was the first one, second one, and third one. All right, one, two, and three. So I'm just gonna go to random.org and generate a number from one to three, and whoever is the generated one is the winner. So number three is the winner, and that is Nicole MacArthur, which is even more incredible because Nicole actually suggested the whole Cards Pick collab. So what I'm going to do for a little giveaway for my Cards Pick collabs is I'm actually going to let the winners pick their own custom press-on set from my shop. I wanted to give away something people don't have, and most people don't have, like, custom press-ons from me. So like you can pick any press-ons that you want from my shop or something and I will try to make it for you. So it'll be like your own custom set. So Nicole, you win your own custom press-on set from my shop. So hit me up and let me know what you want. All right, so getting into it, I'm going to unbox this. And I need to separate the color palette from the art theme. And I also want to do something from this deck, which is the original card game art theme. I think last time I did art theme as well. All right, so I'm going to pick an art theme from the original deck, which is this one. It was the original Dr. Prince, their classic card game. It's a great card game. So this is their first deck ever released. And then I'm going to pick an art theme from this deck and the color palette from this deck. And you know what? I'm gonna be a little interesting about it. This time I'm not just gonna randomly shuffle. I'm going to pick the third card in each deck since the winner of the giveaway was the third person. So I'm gonna pick the first, second. It's going to be the third card. So paint strokes, ooh, okay. Paint strokes, we're gonna do paint strokes. And then the third card from this deck, one, two, three. Oh, delicate dried flowers. Okay, that's a perfect spring theme. Yes. Oh, okay. These can definitely be done together. And then the third card from this deck is, please be pink. Oh, sunset. Oh, ooh. all right. So we have sunset moon, delicate dried flowers, and paint strokes. And just like I did last month, the theme is you can um, you have to stick in the color palette. So that is the color palette. Last year, last month it was silver, but you can pick whichever one of the art themes you wanna do, or if you wanna incorporate them both, you can do that too. So paint strokes or dried, delicate, dry, delicate dried flowers. So that's what I really liked about last month was that you could do either or, which is really funny because the two art themes kind of literally tied into each other. It was so perfect. But this one, I feel like these two tie in together really, really well. I can see tons of great sets with this, but I am intrigued on how to do this. This is going to be an interesting one in how to tie in these colors together. 
So to tell you guys my plan, what I plan on doing, I'm going to use like this shade of blue. You see that blue? I'm going to use that blue in probably like a mauve pink, something like that in between the two of these. Like I like the background color where it's getting that sunset vibe. And then something a little bit darker than that, something in between this vibe. So I like that vibe, this vibe, and that blue. Um, what I'm trying to do for the spring set, I feel like this is a little too dark for it. So I'm going to stick to the background colors that are on the background of the card. That blue, this dark color, and this somewhat lighter color. And then I'm going to do the delicate dried flowers um, and paint strokes intertwined with each other. I'm going to see how that turns out. <laughs> So first things first, I wanted to show you what the end result is going to look like. So it's going to look like this. I did paint strokes, I did dried flowers in two different colors in there, and I decided to add some flakes. And I gotta say thank you to everyone who suggested using blooming gel instead of gel base. I purchased some recently and uh, it's working great. So I applied a layer of blooming gel onto this nail tip, and now I'm taking my 9mm gel liner brush from the Painted Desert and I'm just creating paint strokes all over the nail. So the first layer is not going to be too condensed with paint strokes because that blooming gel really diffuses things a lot in my opinion. And I think that's great. So the paint strokes aren't too harsh or stark on the nail. And I'm switching to different colors. So I'll do two or three strokes of one color and then I'll switch to another color and add it to another part of the nail. So I'm going to add like that darker berry right there in the middle just right here. It's a very, very pretty color and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and then I'm going to cure this in my nail lamp for 60 seconds. After it's done curing, I'm adding a thin layer of blooming gel on top of that. So it's very similar to my rainbow mani design that I did last time where I'm layering on top of like a gel base or a blooming gel. So now I'm going in with a lighter blue and back in with that mauve color. So I'm just going randomly putting swatches or paint strokes of color all over this nail. I added a little bit of white to contrast with the mauve and the darker colors. And now I'm going to cure that in my nail lamp for 60 seconds. When it comes out, I'm going to take gold leaf foil flakes and randomly apply them on top of the design. I don't want to cover like too much of the design because I worked really hard, as you can tell, <laughs> to get those paint strokes on there. So I'm just putting gold leaf foil wherever my heart desires. And then I'm going to apply another layer of the blooming gel on top of this. And I picked out some yellow dried flowers and I'm going to apply them onto the nail. So you notice I don't have a lot of yellow gel polish on here. So I'm going to make up for that by putting yellow dried flowers randomly over the nail. And later on, I'm going to put like a, a darker berry mauve one to really tie in all the colors together. So it's not just going to be yellow dried flowers. And for some reason, I am so out of shot, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm taking my gel liner brush and I'm adding the darker berry color into random spots on the nail. You'll be able to see it in just a second, but you can't see it right now. I'm so, so sorry about that. But yeah, I'm using that gel liner brush and I'm putting berry spots randomly just to give it that pop of color that I really want it to have so it can match the sunset moon card that I drew. And then after I'm done applying the gel polish in random spots, I'm going to cure that for 60 seconds. So you're going to be able to see me take the dried flowers in the darker mauve color and put that on random spots of the nail. So remember, after the nail comes out of the lamp, it's still tacky. So the dried flowers and anything extra will stick to it really, really easily, but I do press it down to help it a little bit to stick. And then another thing that's my favorite thing to do is add flakes. I have these flakes from Maniology. They're incredible to use. And if you ever feel like your nail is missing something, like your art is missing something, just dab on some flakes in like random spots of the nail and it elevates the whole design. I've been doing this a lot recently and I should probably buy more flakes before I run out. But these flakes are incredible to use and I really do feel like it just adds that extra great element to a 
art design. So I'm satisfied with how the design looks and now I basically need to encapsulate this. So you don't have to do this step the way I am, but I take gel base coat and I'm applying it right over this. Then after that cures for 60 seconds, I'm taking my rubber top coat from the Painted Desert and I'm gonna apply it over top of this. And it's basically going to encapsulate this whole design. The rubber top coat is thick. It's thinner than builder gel, but it's still thicker than your typical runny top coat. And the great thing about this is it's great for encapsulating nail art designs. So after I make sure that I've covered all of the area of the nail, I'm going to flip the tip upside down. If you're doing this on your hands, flip your hand upside down. And what it's going to do, it's going to level out and pull the gel. So it has like a nice meniscus, like um, if you're a lab tech, you know what I'm talking about. But it's just going to look nice and level. So you can see now I left it like hanging upside down for like 30 seconds. And look how nicely sculpted that is. That is the beauty to this thicker gel top coat. So I think it looks great. I'm going to cure that in my lamp for 60 seconds. And then when I take it out of the lamp, it is perfectly nice and smooth. However, I'm going to show you what to do if it's not perfectly smooth. Take a gentle buffing block and buff off the surface of the top coat. But you're not only, you're doing two things when you do this. Not only are you trying to remove the shine of the top coat, but you're trying to make sure it's all nice and level. And you can usually tell when you're buffing if it's not level because you will see a dip or a divot that is still shiny and harder for you to buff into and that is what gives it away that it is not level. So for the most part my nail was level however if it's not that's what I do. I try to buff off the shine and buff it nice and smooth. Then I take rubbing alcohol and I wipe off any debris or dust that was on that nail and then I'm going to take a gel primer and I'm going to apply it all over the entire nail so that when I apply a thin top coat, since I already did a thick top coat, I don't need to do another layer of thick. I'm going to apply a thin top coat over this when that becomes nice and tacky and I'm going to cure that in my nail lamp. So I know that was like a lot to throw at you. If you want me to repeat this in another video tutorial in the future, like how to encapsulate your nails with gel, I totally can. But this is basically how I encapsulate those thicker, lumpier, bumpier, uneven designs. All right, so I'm going to show you the rest of the colors that I did. So I'm using colors that I used in the paint strokes of the design. So I have that lighter blue, the mauve, and the deeper, darker mauve. So those are the colors I chose to use as my solid colors, but you can totally use other colors. I tried the yellow, but it was a little too sheer. So that's why I didn't go with the yellow. But um, I'm moving over and applying my sticky tabs because I did design these as press-ons and I want to wear them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I don't usually show this part in my videos, but you know what? Why not? I'm taking sticky tabs and applying one to each of my nails. This way I can apply the press-ons. Usually I just change from them being on the stands to you seeing them on my fingers. But I want to show you guys my process. I peel off the little cover that's on top of the sticky tabs and then press on the tip onto my nail and press and hold it down. Now, if you're doing this and you're struggling with getting your sticky tabs to last a longer while, I definitely recommend using like a nail dehydrator on your nails prior to applying your sticky tabs and letting that air dry. And then I also recommend you not expose your hands to water for several hours. I know that's very difficult, especially if you like to have clean hands. So um, hand sanitizer is a great alternative if your hands like, I don't know, you touch something sticky or whatever. Um, but definitely try to avoid touching anything where it would require you to wash your hands or take a shower or anything because those sticky tabs are going to become like null and void very, very rapidly if they get exposed to water within just a couple hours of being applied. So I'm almost done applying the press on nails. I love how this design set turned out. I'm literally obsessed with doing the gel and the flowers together for my Manny of the Month subscription for my press-on business. I've been doing dried flowers and then I've been doing layered gel colors, 
But this is the first time I've done dried flowers with gel polish kind of like blended in there together. So I love how this turned out and I would appreciate if you guys let me know in the comments if you loved this and if you plan on taking part in this month's Cards Pick collab. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.